Kentucky basketball plays Duquesne tomorrow night, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think the Wildcats are going to run all over them. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Upside. You can download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCK to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. On today's episode of Locked on Kentucky, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Duquesne Dukes. Going to talk about the X's and O's, going to talk about the individual matchups, what we should expect. Oscar Shibwe, Severe Wheeler, what is their status heading into this game? Going to give a final score prediction and then later on in the show. Going to talk about Kentucky basketball in the early signing period. Really, really doing a lot of great work. Already got some kids signed. A couple more to get. We'll talk about that later on in the show. Thank you so much for making Locked on Kentucky your first listen Every single day, I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean a ton for the show moving forward. So Duquesne, we talked about them a little bit on yesterday's show. If you want to go watch that link is in the description. Duquesne, coached by Keith Dambrod. There are two statistics that I want to bring up that I brought up yesterday. I want to reiterate them here. And I think it's the key to this matchup. Duquesne has consistently done two things under Dan Brott. They've been one of the slowest teams in the country in terms of adjusted tempo. They have not gotten up and down the court quickly. They do not like to push the pace often. I think immediately you are probably assuming where I'm going with this as far as matchup-wise. They're slow. And then the second thing is, under Dan Brott, they have consistently struggled to guard two-point field goals. In Dan Brott's five seasons, before the start of this season, I'm not counting this one as a six because they've only played one game, In Dan Brott's five seasons with the Dukes, Duquesne finished in the bottom half of Division I in two-point field goal percentage defensively four of those five times. They are not a great team on the inside, and they are slow. What would that indicate to you as a fan that has watched Kentucky basketball over the last few years not necessarily push the pace, but their offense, especially last season, excelled in transition? immediately you just go, that's a bad matchup. On paper, it's a bad matchup. And then on top of that, last season, Duquesne, we talked about this on yesterday's show, offensively challenged, didn't score even 66 points a game last year. Now, they cleaned house. They lost a lot of that production, and I put production in air quotes because there was not a whole lot of it to begin with, and they got in a couple different transfers. There are a couple that I want to talk about here that are going to be important to this matchup, but from a pacing standpoint, from an athleticism standpoint, From a speed standpoint, right off the jump, you start to favor the Wildcats in a lot of those categories. Now, I want to reiterate something I said also on yesterday's show. The St. Peter's game has kind of given me a little bit of a different perspective on these types of matchups where Kentucky's favored by 25 or they're favored to blow the team out and the team is is, is relative to Kentucky, unathletic, can't shoot, all these different things. There is always an opportunity for a team to sneak in and get the upset. In college basketball, there is so much more parity in this than college football. But it does not make me want to sit here and then project or predict Duquesne to go out and make this game close. It does not change my opinion on the fact that I don't believe this game is going to be difficult. I think that it's going to be not necessarily a cakewalk, but it's a game Kentucky should win, and I would expect them to do so. Another note here, as far as Kentucky outside shooting, we're going to get to that in a minute, but defensively, I want to focus on the Dukes here. So obviously, like I mentioned, they struggle with two-point field goal percentage. On top of that, they went from the fourth best three-point defense in 2021 to the fourth worst in the country. Last year, defensively, they were awful. Now again, they retooled their personnel. They've got new faces, but... That is definitely something I think you need to keep an eye on to see if that translates over into this matchup against a really good Kentucky team. I'm going to talk about the outside shot in a little bit, but right off the jump, one of the things that you can assume in this game, Kentucky's going to probably want to play fast. 
and they're going to want to push it. Now, whether or not they go consistently to, to attack the rim more often than the outside shot, I think that's the question. We don't know. But one way or another, I think Kentucky's going get to get out and they're going to try and run in this game. Because on paper, the matchup suggests that they would be able to. Now, I've talked to you a little bit in the past about how I've been frustrated with Coach Cal and the way that he operates his offense. And I, I, I've seen a lot more fan base frustration than frustration from myself. But I'll, I'll say this. I don't necessarily think you can take like a deep dive into the X's and O's of the Calipari, Calipari offense in a game like this because I think a lot of the things that Kentucky is going to have success with in this game, it's going to be similar to the Howard game in that it's a little chaotic, it's a little all, all over the place at some, t- at some times, and the most success Kentucky is going to find is on those broken plays where Duke or Duquesne just simply does not get back in transition or they have a blown assignment. It's not necessarily going to be like, oh, we're scripting up all these stagger screens and different things like that, and we're going to be running this weave and doing all these different things. I, I, I Obviously, Kentucky's going to do that, but I don't think you necessarily have to get complex in your assumptions here if you are a casual viewer of Kentucky basketball. You can just come, kind of come into it and say, okay, I expect the system to work. Do not have to really think about how the system is it works, is essentially is what I'm saying here. All right, I want to talk about a couple of different important matchups and players that we need to watch in this game. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Upside, whether it's driving less, buying uh, buying less from the grocery store. We can all agree there's nothing fun about less. And our friends at Get Upside are here to help. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. It's absolutely phenomenal. With Upside, I don't have to cut, cut back because I get cash back on every single purchase that I make. It's been great for me so far. I've been using it actually for a few months now. It's legitimate. It's awesome. To get started, you can download the free Upside app and you can use my promo code LOCKED and get $5 more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every single week collectively. That's probably why they have an extremely high rating over on the App Store. Again, download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCK to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Continuing our preview of Kentucky versus Duquesne. Going to give a score prediction here in just a second. Before I do that, let's look at some of the individual matchups that we could be eyeing in this game. Right off the jump, there's a player for Duquesne that I want to highlight that went off in the season opener against Montana. Day Day Grant. He is a guard. He is a transfer from Miami. Played three years with the Red Hawks before transferring over to the Dukes. Dropped 25 points in just 21 minutes. Had three rebounds, two assists, a steal, Shot 100% from the floor. The man did not miss. He dropped 25 and 21 minutes and did not miss. And he was a scorer at Miami, too. Last year, he averaged over 17 points a game. I believe the year before that, he averaged over 14 points a game. I mean, this guy, since he got into college basketball, has just kind of been a known scorer. He's not particularly tall, six foot two, 190 pounds. But he is somebody that I think when you look at Kentucky's backcourt defensively, and we talked about this, we talked about this on yesterday's show, What does Kentucky want to do rotationally whenever you talk about their guard lineup? Do they want to have it where they have Case and Wallace, uh, Antonio Reeves, C.J. Frederick all out there at the same time? Who is going to be guarding, if that's the lineup that Kentucky wants to go with, who is going to be guarding Day-Day Grant? And I think it's got to be Case and Wallace, right? I think that, that that's the easy answer here, is he is the best defender, I think, out of your guards. And Antonio Reeves, I mean, Coach Cal talked about it. He was like, I'm impressed with the way that Reeves played defensively. I, it was better than I expected. But something I want to note here, obviously the starting lineup is Wallace, Frederick, Livingston, Toppin, and Ware until Shibway and Wheeler come back. But I also want to note that this is something we talked about on yesterday's show. 20% of the time on the floor against Howard, Kentucky had that three-guard lineup with Reeves in there instead of Livingston. I think that you have to be aware of what opposing teams want to do offensively when they have more than one guard that is lethal, one more than one guard that can actually go out there and get a bucket. Obviously, Dede Grant was the one carrying in the season opener, and I can't just sit here and say, oh, well, then everybody else is not as good or will not statistically improve as the season goes on. 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think Day Day is going to be averaging 25 a game this year. If he is, props to him. Better than I expected. Defensively, I think that you put Wallace on him and you let it rock. If he scores 25, he scores 25 because I'm going to be honest with you. Don't have a whole lot of excitement outside of him on this team offensively. Second closest score to him in the season opener was, uh, I don't know if it's Mattis. I don't know if it's Matus. I don't know how to pronounce it. We're just going to call him Matt Pronsky. A forward average uh, scored 13 points in 29 minutes in the season opener. Shot 83% from the floor and 66.7% from three. He was two of three from behind the arc. Joe Reese, another four that they've got. I think you've got to keep an eye on how Chris Livingston and Jacob Toppin handle Pronsky and Reese. I think that's going to be the matchup there. You're going to be looking for Pronsky more than anything, how Jacob Toppin plays him. Obviously, Toppin, very athletic, very aggressive. I think he probably wins that matchup nine times out of ten. We'll just have to see. And then the next closest guard in terms of scoring was, scoring was Quincy McGriff, who scored 10 in the season opener. He is a sophomore. Uh, he did not play last season, sat on the bench. So there's a lot of new faces on this Duquesne team, and it's it's a team that, again, I want to reiterate, struggled last year. And they have, right out the gate, they have a, a really good score in Grant. But outside of him, I hate to use the the Montana game as the, as the only kind of like resource here to do this analysis, but it's all we've got on this team. And so just projecting forward, I mean, if we're going to base it off of what we saw, I'm not really confident that they can produce another score that could maybe give Kentucky a run for their money in this matchup. And again, I may be wrong. I may just be flat out wrong. But stylistically, you look at the way these two teams play on paper. You watch Kentucky specifically because, again, they're the more athletic team. It's not a good matchup for Duquesne. If Day Day does not, if Case Wallace is able to hold Day Day, it's not. I'm not saying it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be a 50 point blowout. I'm just saying it's not going to be. It's going to be a wildcat win. And I, that's where I'm leaning in this game. If I had to give a final score, you know, Kim Palm has Kentucky winning this game, 82 61. I don't know if if Kentucky's going to, I don't know if Duquesne's going to hold Kentucky to 82 points. I'm going to go 89 to 65. I'll go 89 to 65, and that's not just me pulling that out. I have it on my notes. Um, But I think that Kentucky's going to be able to get get out and run and transition in this game. I think they're going to be able to do a lot of good things offensively. And if Day-Day's not going, then this game is over. If you've got a score prediction for this matchup, you can leave it in the YouTube comments below. Or if you're listening on socials, you can hit me on Twitter at LockedOnUK. Give me your final score prediction for this matchup. Before we wrap up the show, I want to talk to you guys about Kentucky and their strong early signing period, doing a lot of great things out on the recruiting trail, getting kids signed. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, Stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball, soccer to esports. They've got it all over at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts like this one, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. That is BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, continuing along here on the Thursday edition of Locked on Kentucky. Kentucky had a strong early signing period. They got some of their kids signed. They've got two more that they're looking at potentially getting here within the coming weeks. Let's just go over them go over them here briefly before we head out. Rob Dillingham, obviously the star, in my opinion, when you watch him on film of this class, he was one of the signees in uh, over the past couple of days in this early signing period. Just get a scouting report briefly on him. Briefly, briefly, geez, on him. Six foot three, 165 pounds. He is the number eight overall player in the rivals rankings, as well as the on three rankings. One of the best point guards in the entire country coming out of over, overtime elite. We've talked about this kid and how explosive he is on the offensive end. He can do it all, and he's a great distributor. He's a great shooter. We've gotten to see him in a couple of different tournaments and things recently. Just the highlights are. You know, whenever you see a player coming out of high school and you see them playing very well at the high school level, like just dominating, you can kind of get a vibe as to, based on their play style, how they could potentially project out to the collegiate level. 
And depending on different players, you can just kind of look at them and say, after studying and watching them for a while, like, this kid may be good at a high at the high school level, but he's not going to be good in college. As good. Or this kid's good at, in high school, and he's going to be good in college, but he's not an NBA player. He doesn't possess the skill set that could potentially get him to the next level, or at least the potential's not there. You don't see it. With this kid, when you watch him, it's immediate. I mean, he is going to immediately be somebody that Kentucky relies on. Again, offensively, I think this kid's going to be one of the best players in the nation next year. I'm very excited about him. Rob Dillingham. And then Reed Shepard, one of the most underrated, I think, players in this next year's class. I've said that before. He's like some hovering somewhere around the top 25 to 30-ish range in terms of overall. And then he's like one of the top 10 uh, point guard, combo guards in the country. Six foot two. 180 pounds out of London, Kentucky. Again, you talk about a player that's just very skilled and doing a lot of different things offensively and then defensively. Uh, I think that just as far as intelligence goes and as far as athleticism goes, he's the guy, he's the type of guy that you want playing that stereotypical two guard type of role. We talked about this months ago, I think. I don't expect Reed to be running point consistently for the Wildcats next season, especially if Rob's running it. Um, and if Wallace doesn't uh, go to the draft, I think that uh, you definitely see Dillingham and Wallace kind of taking that there. I definitely see Shepard as more of a, a true two, just based on the way that I've watched him, and I'm curious to see if Cal utilizes him in that way. Justin Edwards, five-star. Everybody's talked about him. Everybody knows about him. Uh, you Again, use the word explosive. Uh, he's he's definitely uh, very, very talented. And this is something that we said about Case and Wallace heading into this season, and, and it's kind of like been made known to the fan base like he's not just a defensive player, although his scouting report would indicate that that is the strong suit of his game. Justin Edwards and Case and Wallace, I believe, possess, possess strong offensive games. And we're just going to have to see how Edwards like translates to the collegiate level, but I like both of their games offensively even though the scouting report would indicate that these two guys are very, very strong defenders, and they are, and they are. And offensively, I think this is just one of those guys that's similar to Livingston in the fact that he's just kind of bruising in the way that he likes to get to the rim. Uh, Physical guy, really like him as as projecting out to be that small forward, I think, for the Wildcats next season. The two players that Kentucky's not signed as of this recording, Aaron Bradshaw, five-star. He's expected to sign his letter of intent next week. One of the best players in the entire country, I believe, recently. I can't remember which recruiting rankings it was. He rose to number one, like the best player in the country, period. And then DJ Wagner, um, obviously, like number one or no, number two in most recruiting service rankings. No word on him yet. Although reports that you can go out and read would indicate that he is going to sign and commit at some point within the next few weeks during this early signing period. We're just going to have to wait to see. Going to have to be patient on that. But yeah. The fact that Kentucky was able to secure Rob, Reed, and Justin already got them all on lock. Aaron Bradshaw, DJ Wagner likely to come along. We've talked about it. It's the super class. It's going to be special. It's going to be impressive. It's going to be fun to look forward to. All right. Again, if you guys guys have thoughts on this game coming up, the Duquesne game, leave it in the YouTube comments below. We're going to have a preview of the Michigan State game out on Monday. I will be at that game in Indianapolis. It's going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to it. It's one of those matchups where I think that Kentucky should win, but because of the stage and because of what's going to happen, it may be a little bit closer. Maybe a little bit closer. We'll talk on that on Monday. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel so that you do not miss that episode. Again, I am thrilled to be able to actually go to that game here in just a few days. You can follow the show on Twitter over at LockedOnUK. Follow me on Twitter at LanceDaw underscore, and you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments below or hit me on the socials. I will see you all on Monday for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless.